92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com. We are streaming audio live, RTC Channel 5, and audio and soon-to-be video on RTC Channel 4. Scott is back in the studio with us. Hey, Scott, how you doing? Good morning, Tom. Nice to have you with us again. It's a good time. By you golly, your smiling face and everything. Just nice to have you with us. Doc Talk for your Monday morning and for the month of September. Dr. Eric Seward with us, OBGYN at Woodlawn Hospital. Dr. Seward, good morning. Hey, good morning to you guys. Let me remind our listeners, too, as we go through the course of the program, if you have a question, give us a call. Baron will field that at 223-6059. And yeah. we're going to be discussing... We're talking about exercise ah. today, and this is a big, big topic. Um, well, quick to point out here that this is the one-year anniversary of this program doc from, talk wow from, from my point of view wow well anyway. congratulations yeah so hey yeah. here we are <laughs> well, <laughs> One year down later. and uh many many more to go right that's right All that's right. right now um a little background on me and you might not might not know this to look at me um <laughs> but i i spent um last uh saturday as i spend most of my saturdays this time of year running around at a uh, cross-country meet um, I've got kids that run for Rochester, both the middle school and the high school. And um, for years and years, I've been doing this. I have a, a senior and college daughter who's an all-American cross-country wow. track runner. And um, all up and down the line, they've all done this. And um, I myself have run 12 marathons. Um, I've, I, I was just thinking about this on the way in. Probably 60 or 80 triathlons of various lengths. Um, just not but a week or two ago did the uh, damn the damn bike ride and and um have been really involved in the exercise community both as a an athlete and as a coach and a trainer for others for years uh, ran an exercise and running group uh when we lived down near marion and so with that in mind this is a very you know i could talk for hours on this and <laughs> condensing this into a few minutes is going to be tough it may be one of these things that if there's interest expressed, we can come back and kind of tear into little bits and pieces. I'm going to have to kind of keep it general for, okay. for this purpose. Um, and But I think with regards to health, if you ask people just in general, are you healthy? The first thing they'll tell me almost always in my office is I could, I could lose a few pounds. Sure. And... It's, it's kind of interesting because that doesn't have as much health impact as people seem to think it does. They, it, it really has more of a maybe a social mental aspect. Exercise um, has a, a, an extremely functional aspect. And that's the second thing that people will point out is, well, I, I should go to the gym more often or I should be, you know, I should walk more often. Or I, whatever. Should do, sure. I should do whatever it is that sure. I do. And um, and oftentimes, if I'm if I'm going to you know get into a health discussion with somebody, just generally, those are the two big topics. They don't they they won't tell me what their cholesterol is or the last time they had their <laughs> Pap smear, or mammogram, or prostate check, or any of that kind of stuff. They'll they'll tell me, do they exercise and and are they overweight? Um, now, that said, um, there's there's a slight difference in I'm going to try to focus a little on one aspect there's a difference between training so when we are talking about you know a kenyan marathon runner or the kids running around doing cross country that's very specific and it's sport specific if you're talking about football or if you're talking about basketball or if you're talking about you know distance running versus sprinting things like that there are different ways that you approach that that's exercise with a specific purpose um when and a specific talk, way to do it. Uh, exactly. Right. And, and when we talk about exercise for health, we're really talking more about the functional aspect that our bodies are machines, that that we are amazing machines. We are adaptable machines. There are no machines out there with maybe the exception of computers that can learn and adapt and grow the way a, a body can. You take, um, a, and I'll give you just a couple of extreme examples, you take a one of uh, my oldest daughter's teammates maybe or her and you you run her 100 miles a week and her every part of her body from her bones to her lungs to her heart to her muscles to her brain all physiologically change to handle that workload you take a cross-country semi-truck driver who spends you know 12 hours a day setting 
or more, I don't know, I don't know what the numbers are, but the, so, spends the majority of their time setting, and they may be working hard, they may be doing important services, but they aren't, they're, they're training their body to set, basically. Right. And most of us are more like that <laughs> than, than the 100 mile a week Precisely. runners. I, I always think, too, that if you, if you think about um, exercise as being something that can make a person more functional, that actually probably keys into the most important aspect of exercise. Sadly, there's, there's a sort of a good news, bad news part uh, side to this whole discussion and the bad news part is I think most people have this this misconception that if they if they live a certain way if they exercise a certain way perhaps if they eat a certain way that they're going to live longer well a little bit um, and and it's not to say that there there isn't truth to how we can control health parameters with what we eat and do but we are genetically programmed largely to live however long we live. Uh, and that doesn't change a lot if you do intense exercise. In fact, the, the most intense exercisers on earth don't, aren't societies that are necessarily long lived. And the longest lived uh, folks, the, there are communities in Japan and Italy and Russia that have been studied, do tend to be active, but they tend to be um, they tend to be less intensely active. They tend to do a lot of walking and a lot of agrarian living and, and probably eat certain diets and just have really phenomenal pockets of genetics. Yeah, so much of it is, is genetics, yeah, right? Yes, so much of it is. Now, where exercise, and that's my topic today, really has a big impact on health is functionality. If, if you think of my goal as a doctor, and I say this often to people, if they come into my office and we're talking maybe an annual exam, um, a wellness exam. Sure. And I will, I will say up front that, you know, I've got two goals, basically. One of those goals is to keep you alive as long as I can within reason. Right. And the second goal is um, I want you doing whatever it is that you do every day until then and so you know you could look at that as it's great to live to be 90 but it's more important that you're out on the golf course the day before you know it's it's much more important that we live this long functional life where we're doing the things that we're doing at a high level and you and you see this with uh, this divergence grows a lot after people kind of hit 50 60 and beyond if you're an exerciser, you're going to be a much higher functioning person. You're going to live that life well. And that's, that's sort of where the focus in exercise and health, I think, should be. Now, when you're talking about training, that's a different matter. And that's, that may be a topic for another day. <laughs> but, okay. um, now, there are different various types. And, and this is sort of, uh, again, a generic overview. Um, one of the types of, of exercise is what we would call aerobic exercise. And you can get this in a, a lot of different fashions. Basically, we have different energy systems in our body. If you think of our metabolic burner, um, I always, when I'm talking to my cross-country runners, I always talk to them about if I were to put you on a rail trail that went to California and I just said run, and they ran along at a, a nice even trot, and I, I fed them the right um, nutrients and, and energy bars and drinks and kept them hydrated along the way, theoretically, if you're burning only aerobic energy, you should be able to continue and continue and continue and okay. continue. It's a continuous okay. process. It's using what's called the Krebs cycle, which is the, the metabolic pathway that ultimately provides us with ATPs, which are the energy forming molecules in our, our cells. And that can go on and on and on. Um, it's, it's basically, if you think of it as a fire burning oxygen, well, that's what our metabolic burner is doing. It's okay. taking carbons from the food we eat. It's burning them in a metabolic fire in our, in our, in our cells mm -hmm. and ultimately energizing us to go. And so long as you provide those substrates, that can go on and on and on. That's what happened to Forrest Gump, right? Uh, yeah. Well, he did that. He did it exactly <laughs> until he decided not to. Um, I, another part of, of exercise would be um, sort of functional movement, what I would think of as, and this is, sort of comes in a couple of different um, ways. One of those ways would be from strength. You know, we think about a guy in a weight room, you know, lifting, uh, doing bench press or, or squats or whatever. That strength is, is sort of a part of how, how functional we are. Obviously, the stronger 
one can resist gravity essentially um okay. the, the stronger our bones are the stronger our muscles are the the more compact and solid we are now how much that has impact on long health is is variable but we definitely know that we'll say in my world you know you've got a 70 year old woman she falls what are the likelihoods of her breaking her hip um well if she's got really good strong bones because she's been out jogging every day or been at the gym, you know, she has a better ways, chance not to break her hip. She has a much better right. chance, and if she does break her hip, she has a better chance to recover from right. it because the the structure's there. Um, there's there's also anaerobic exercise, and this is the, actually this is one of my favorite ones to talk about because I, I I always use the analogy with my runners of if I if I pulled out a gun and said, I'm going to get you, sucker, and you said, ah, and took off running as fast as you could, you would make it, you know, from here to the courthouse, maybe, <laughs> maybe around the corner, I don't know, and then you'd be gassed, you'd right. be out of breath. Now, it's good to get away from somebody that's sure. just trying to get you, but um, at the same time, that's a, a dead-end pathway. We can go all out for only a short period of time. We have, in, in running, in fact, we, we say that there's usually about 40 yards or 30 yards of of just free energy that you have to just go and then at that point you've got to use some kind of metabolic pathway and you're and you're now working faster than you can process oxygen so at that point you're you're using a whole different energy pathway that's a dead end and that'll get you maybe around the corner and away from danger but it's not going to get you all the way to california so if you think of exercise in those terms the other thing i oftentimes will do is when a lot of times you say exercise and people automatically start thinking about their waistline and this is this is you know i i would argue that exercise is sort of a mathematics game when it comes to to waistline if you want to be thinner um, if a person wants to have different form exercise is certainly one really important aspect of that um, if you think of, a, of of us as being basically made of carbon if you if you were to get a steak and you were to throw it on your plate and you were to look at the nutritional information on the package <laughs> it will tell you that it's got x number of grams of protein right. and fats and carbohydrates well that's what we are and we get those things those are all carbon substrate things that we get from the food we eat so if you think of a simple diagram of a stick man with carbons going in the mouth <laughs> and the, that that's the food you eat and then you draw a little circle in the belly um, we'll call that the metabolic burner and that's our that's our the processes we use to burn off the energy that we take in and then we breathe off carbon dioxide right. well those are our two controllable wings so they're, they're really all three of those aspects are controllable on the the, the intake side it's diet you know so it's what you eat if you if you eat more than you can process you are going to become plumper right um if you if you breathe off lots of carbons, uh, that's that's good. It kind of drives that that pathway that direction. I, I once I had a patient ask me, "Can I just instead of exercising, just go home and breathe real fast?" <laughs> like you do that for a little while till you pass out, but right, exactly. <laughs> it probably won't work for very long. Exactly. Um, and then and then um, the metabolic burner part of that is is critical too. Um, interestingly, you know, a lot of people and and this is a grand debate you know if you want to get the the most like fat burning per minute of exercise you want to hop on a a, a treadmill or whatever your your torture device of, of choice is and <laughs> and you want to go and go and go and go at kind of a medium intensity in that aerobic zone for a long time you want to burn through all of your free glycogen and just start sucking away fat that's that's the the quickest way to get to it but there are many people that would point out that that metabolic burner is driven much more by our lean body mass. Uh, and if you think about it, there's two ways to do that. One is to make the lean part of us more. And uh, that's where you get into things like functional weightlifting and stuff like that. The other problem, and we see this all the time in, in say, distance running, if all you do is go out and, and, and go one distance you're basically doing a linear exercise you get really good at going straight um our bodies you know adapt to whatever we do like i said before and so if you are doing and the same exercise sort of continuously you are going to run into specific injuries and problems that go along with that repetitive motion um so 
the idea of having f functional dynamic uh, function basically be able to go left, right, up and down, you know, to have strength and flexibility and, and motion to do that. Um, there are a lot of people that would say that that has to be a, a, a part of the big picture of, of being as healthy as one possibly can be with exercise. I think it's, you know, I think the biggest battle, quite frankly, is just getting off the couch and doing it. Well, I was going to ask you about that yeah. because let's say I know Scott exercises every day on a regular basis. <laughs> I, I don't necessarily, but let's say I decide I want to, I want to take up some jogging and I, and I want to get a little more physical fit. Mm -hmm. Is it something I should just jump right into or is it something i should gradually work my way into well i think i i, I think there's there's sort of a few things to consider with that if you are 18 or 20 jump right in all right <laughs> there you go scott you're all set <laughs> if, if you're um if you haven't been used to and nobody's going to be able to hop off the couch and go and go run a marathon that's that that requires a lot of work and a lot of dedication and a lot of um you know, internal training. I mean, you've got to kind of get yourself prepared for the big challenges. But, but when you're you're young, you're made of Teflon. We all know. We all remember. And um, and you can. I, I have. And this is true from a health perspective. If you're a 20 year old, and I I'm not advocating any of this, but if you were a 20 year old that was sitting on the couch eating potato chips, drinking <laughs> rye whiskey, doing crystal meth, and you don't kill yourself, right? Um, and you have a come to Jesus moment right. <laughs> when you are 20 right. years old and you clean yourself up and you stop smoking and, and chewing and whatever other bad habits sure. you have. And you get out there and take up running and exercise. Um, you bring that person back when they're 50, they're the same as any other 50 year old. Um, and the reason for that is we are so dynamic at that age. Um, you take somebody who's say 60 and you throw them, you get them off the couch, tell them to quit smoking and go out and jog, I might kill them in the first workout, you know, and, and so you do have to very much ease into that. Our bodies aren't quite as elastic, I think, and, and, and it's different for different people, but I think that you start to see the elasticity wear a little bit when you hit 30, 35, and, and it, it, it sort of wears thinner and thinner as you go, and, and of course, if you're used to that, if you're the you know the 70 year old who's been out jogging all of these years, you're going to continue being able to do that. If you're the if you're the 60 year old who's never been a jogger but decides you want to be, um, you can still do that. There's some really wonderful stories of of septuagenarians and octogenarians who run marathons mm -hmm. who picked up the who picked up the sport in their 50s or 60s, right. but. You do have to kind of baby step it a okay. little bit more into that. Okay. It's the the exercise is slightly different. I would say you have to listen to your body. As always, you want to get you want to at least get reasonable medical clearance. We as doctors don't know every little internal process that's happening, but we want to make sure you don't have like real obvious like onset of heart conditions or blockages or things that might you know that might cause major problems if we if we send you out the door running but most people um and and if you don't believe me go to any local silver sneakers chapter right and you you'll find that most people benefit from exercise and it, whether that exercise is low impact and just fun i i remember we the urologist i used to work with was dr wong I used to go swim laps in the morning sometimes at the YMCA where I lived, and and uh, this guy would, he would go in and do water aerobics, and he was the only guy with like 20 women, <laughs> and uh, he, it, you could always tell him partly because he was the only guy, but he also had like he had gone out and bought all of the. Um, matching equipment and i mean you know, he didn't just show up at the wire you know grab their their you know float belt or whatever and go for it he came in you know all tricked out and um i i remember you know just a couple times swimming laps and looking up and seeing dr wong there with all the you know his crowd and they were probably all average age of 70 and ready to hop in the water and go for it. And I'm, I'm telling you, you know, he was a functional and, and healthy guy for his age. He was having a blast I'll bet. doing it. I don't yep. think there's anybody in this town who will have more fun today than the folks at the Silver Sneakers. Exactly. You know, if they've got the right... The well, right, it's not only a physical thing, you know. too. It's a mental thing. Oh, totally. Yeah. And yeah. our brains yeah. are, are yeah. tied um, directly to our bodies. It's not to say that our 
that that a healthy body necessarily equals a healthy brain. There's a lot of processes there, but a healthy body definitely um, promotes the best health one can have with their brain. You get good blood flow up to the old noggin, and it's going to <laughs> going to continue to function for a while. Doctor Seward, how do folks get a hold of you? Oh well, they can they can call over to the office. Um, I'm in in Woodlawn Hospital. There's a Woodlawn. Uh, I don't have the number off of okay. me, but it's on the website. Um, sure. And uh, you can you can call over, get in and see me. I'm on the, the second floor there, and the uh, the well, we we call ourselves the Wimps, the uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Woodlawn uh, Medical Practice, and, and I'm up there with Dr. Salt and Dr. Aldrich and and uh, Dr. Nile and. Um, Etc. The pediatricians, um, you know, we we have a really good practice, really good group of people, and um, I think it's very accessible. If you look at our patient satisfaction, we're we're doing great. Good. Um, I think we're doing a great service for the community. So hope to see everybody. Anybody wants to come in and talk about exercise, they may get an earful from me. <laughs> um, and I'm, you know, like I said, this is a big, big topic. And I mean, I could just, if you just wanted to talk about training for cross country, I could, I could probably talk you until you didn't want to hear anymore. Um, but you know, with exercise, I, I think the key is doing it. You know, pick your thing, get off the couch, get out there, get a go start. for a walk, yep. go for a run, go for a bike ride. You know, it, it'll it'll bring you joy. It'll make you more functional. It'll get the rust out of the joints and ultimately hopefully lead on to something bigger. Dr. Eric Seward, as always, thanks. We appreciate your time. We appreciate your information. All right.